Have you ever gazed at the stars and wondered about the complexity of the universe? Have you pondered why the cosmos in its vastness follows harmonious laws of physics? Have you ever observed the delicate balance that sustains life on our planet and thought, how did all this come to be? From the smallest atomic particle to the grandeur of the galaxies, there's an intricate network of systems, all working in perfect sync. The human brain, the DNA molecule, the butterfly's metamorphosis. Aren't these marvels of nature a testament to an elaborate design? Is it all just a product of pure chance, a series of cosmic accidents, or is there something more to it? Could there be an intelligent mind behind all these intricacies? These are the profound questions that have puzzled thinkers and philosophers for centuries. What if you were told that there is a theory that attributes this complexity to an intelligent cause? Welcome to the fascinating world of intelligent design. As we embark on this intellectual journey, it's essential to understand what we're dealing with when we talk about intelligent design. It's a concept that proposes life and the universe aren't the products of random processes, but rather the result of a purposeful design. It's a perspective that sees the intricate structures and processes in nature as evidence of an intelligent designer's handiwork. Imagine a master watchmaker who meticulously assembles each cog and gear to create a timepiece that seamlessly ticks away. Intelligent design suggests that the complexity and functionality we see in the natural world, from the smallest microorganisms to the vast expanses of the universe, are akin to that masterfully crafted watch. Now, how does intelligent design differ from other theories about life's origins and the universe? Well, let's take evolution via natural selection, for instance. This theory, championed by Charles Darwin, posits that life evolved gradually over billions of years through a process of genetic variation and environmental selection. In contrast, intelligent design does not necessarily reject evolution or the age of the universe. Instead, it questions whether these processes could have occurred without some form of guidance or direction. It's like asking whether a beautiful painting could emerge from randomly splashing paint onto a canvas. It's important to note that intelligent design does not identify who or what this designer might be. The designer could be a deity, an alien civilization, or even a natural force we have yet to understand. The focus is not on the identity of the designer, but on the evidence of design itself. So, we've covered the basics of what intelligent design is, and how it stands apart from other theories. But what does intelligent design really mean? Intelligent design suggests that certain features of the universe and living things are best explained by an intelligent cause. In other words, it proposes that the intricacies and complexities we see around us in the natural world and the cosmos are not products of random processes, but are the result of deliberate action by an intelligent being or force. To truly grasp the concept of intelligent design, let's start with its core premise. The argument of intelligent design revolves around the idea that some systems in nature are too complex to have arisen through natural processes alone. This complexity, proponents argue, points towards design. Consider the example of a watch if we were to stumble upon a timepiece in the middle of a desert, we would not assume that it was the product of random processes. Why? Because the complexity and functionality of the watch imply an intelligent designer. Similarly, intelligent design advocates look at the biological systems and phenomena in the universe and see the hand of an intelligent designer at work. Now let's delve a bit deeper. Intelligent design argues for two specific types of complexity irreducible complexity and specified complexity. Irreducible complexity refers to systems that are composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function and where the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. An example often cited is the bacterial flagellum, a whip-like structure that acts like a motor, allowing bacteria to move. It's composed of several protein parts, all of which are necessary for its function. Proponents of intelligent design argue that such complex systems could not have evolved gradually, piece by piece, because the system is non-functional until all parts are present. 
On the other hand, specified complexity refers to sequences or combinations that are both complex, that is, made up of many parts, and specified, that is, arranged in a particular way. For instance, a single sentence in the English language is specified by the arrangement of letters, but it is also complex because it contains more than a few letters, and the likelihood of this sentence forming randomly is extremely low, suggesting an intelligent cause. Intelligent design also challenges the adequacy of natural processes to explain the complexity of life and the universe. The theory asserts that natural processes like mutation and natural selection are insufficient to explain the intricate design and complexity we see in biological systems. Instead, it proposes that an intelligent cause is a more plausible explanation for such phenomena. However, it's important to note that intelligent design does not attempt to identify the nature or identity of this intelligent cause. It could be a deity, an alien life form, or any other conceivable entity. The theory merely posits that the complexity we see in the universe suggests the existence of an intelligent cause, without making any assumptions about the nature of that cause. It's also worth mentioning that intelligent design does not reject evolution outright. Rather, it questions the completeness of Darwin's theory, arguing that natural processes alone cannot account for the complexity and diversity of life on Earth. Many proponents of intelligent design believe in a form of guided evolution, where an intelligent cause guides the process of evolution to achieve specific outcomes. In essence, intelligent design sees the universe as a product of purposeful action. It offers a thought-provoking perspective on the origins and complexity of life in the universe, challenging us to look beyond natural processes and consider the possibility of an intelligent designer. Now, why would someone believe in intelligent design? Well, there are several reasons, and they all flow from observations of our world and the larger cosmos. Let's delve into the main arguments put forth by proponents of intelligent design which include the complexity of biological structures, the fine-tuning of the universe for life, and the perceived inadequacy of Darwinian evolution to explain certain phenomena. Firstly, there's the complexity of biological structures. Proponents of intelligent design often point to objects in nature that exhibit what they call irreducible complexity. This term refers to systems and processes that are so intricate and interconnected that they could not, according to proponents, have evolved gradually through Darwinian mechanisms. Instead, they argue, these systems must have been purposefully designed in their final form. The bacterial flagellum, a microscopic outboard motor that bacteria use to move around, is one example often cited. Next, there's the argument of the fine-tuning of the universe for life. This is a cosmological argument that observes the precise physical constants and laws in our universe. These constants, like the strength of gravity or the charge of an electron, are so finely tuned that if they were even slightly different, life as we know it could not exist. This remarkable fine-tuning, proponents of intelligent design argue, suggests a designer who intentionally created a universe hospitable to life. Lastly, proponents of intelligent design contend that Darwinian evolution is inadequate to explain certain phenomena. While they do not reject evolution outright, they assert that it cannot account for all the complexity and diversity of life. For instance, they argue that the process of natural selection acting on random mutations cannot explain the rapid explosion of new animal forms during the period known as the Cambrian Explosion, which happened around 540 million years ago. These arguments are not without controversy and they are hotly debated in scientific and philosophical circles. Critics of intelligent design have their own counter-arguments and alternative explanations, which we will explore in our next scene. But for now, let's focus on the perspective of those who advocate for intelligent design. They see a world filled with complexity, precision and beauty that they believe cannot be fully explained by natural processes alone. They see the hallmarks of design, of intention, purpose, and intelligence in the fabric of the cosmos and the structures of life. And so, they come to the conclusion that behind all this, 
there must be a designer. An intelligence that shaped the universe, fine-tuned the laws of physics for life, and engineered the complex biological structures we see in nature. These arguments, proponents believe, point towards an intelligent designer. Like any theory, intelligent design has its critics. And these critics have raised several key points of contention. One of the most significant criticisms is the lack of empirical evidence supporting intelligent design. Critics argue that intelligent design is untestable by the scientific method because it posits an unobservable designer. This leads us to another criticism, the reliance on negative arguments against evolution. Critics point out that much of the intelligent design argument is built on pointing out the perceived flaws in the theory of evolution. They argue that even if these criticisms were valid, they would not automatically validate intelligent design. A theory must stand on its own merits, not simply on the perceived shortcomings of competing theories. The idea that irreducible complexity, a cornerstone of the intelligent design argument, disproves evolution is also criticized. Irreducible complexity suggests that certain biological mechanisms are too complex to have evolved piece by piece. Critics, however, argue that this assumption is based on a misunderstanding of how evolution works. Evolution does not always proceed in a simple, linear fashion. It can involve complex processes such as co-option, where parts that evolved for one function are repurposed for another. Intelligent design is also criticized for its status as a scientific theory. Critics argue that it does not meet the criteria of a scientific theory because it does not make testable predictions, and it does not provide a comprehensive explanation of natural phenomena. Instead, it often resorts to the idea of a designer when faced with unexplained complexity. This, they argue, is not a scientific explanation, but a retreat into mystery. Another criticism is that intelligent design is not a productive theory. In other words, it does not lead to new discoveries or advancements in our understanding of the natural world. Critics argue that because intelligent design does not propose mechanisms or processes, it does not generate hypotheses that can be tested and potentially lead to new knowledge. Finally, critics argue that intelligent design blurs the line between science and religion. They claim that the theory's roots are not in scientific inquiry, but in a desire to reconcile scientific findings with religious beliefs. This, they argue, is not the purpose of science. Science is meant to be an objective pursuit of knowledge, not a tool for validating personal beliefs. These are only some of the criticisms of intelligent design. There are many more, and they are as varied as the critics themselves. These criticisms, however, are not meant to shut down conversation, but to stimulate it. They challenge proponents of intelligent design to refine their arguments and to provide solid, empirical evidence in support of their claims. Despite these criticisms, the debate around intelligent design continues. The theory, with all its strengths and weaknesses, remains a fascinating subject of discussion, pushing us to question, to investigate, and to seek a deeper understanding of our complex and mysterious universe. Intelligent design is indeed a fascinating concept that challenges our understanding of the universe. It dares to tread where conventional scientific theories may hesitate, asking bold questions about the origin and complexity of life itself. At its core, intelligent design proposes that certain features of the universe and living things are best explained by an intelligent cause, not an unguided process such as natural selection. It is a perspective that invites us to look beyond the veil of randomness and perceive a layer of purpose and intentionality in the intricate workings of the cosmos. The arguments for intelligent design are compelling drawing from a range of disciplines such as biology, physics, and even mathematics. It points to phenomena that seemingly defy explanation by natural processes alone, such as the information-rich sequences in DNA or the fine-tuning of physical laws that allow life to exist. However, intelligent design is not without its criticisms. Many argue that it is pseudoscience, lacking empirical evidence and falsifiable predictions. Critics also warn of the God of the Gaps fallacy, where gaps in scientific knowledge are prematurely filled with divine intervention. Yet regardless of where one stands on the intelligent design debate, 
It undeniably provokes thought and stimulates dialogue. It encourages us to question, to investigate, and to not accept the status quo without scrutiny. In a world where mysteries abound and answers are elusive, such a spirit of inquiry is invaluable. As we draw to a close, let's remember that the exploration of ideas like intelligent design is part of our collective journey towards understanding the universe. Whether you find yourself leaning towards acceptance or skepticism, the important thing is to keep the flame of curiosity burning. So let's continue to delve deeper, to grapple with the complex and the mysterious. Research more, form your own opinions, and keep the conversation going. After all, the process of seeking truth is a journey, not a destination. Keep wondering, keep questioning, and remember, the universe is full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled.